Welcome to another video. This is an integral equation. And for some people, you've never heard this before. But it's just like a differential equation, but this is in integral calculus, in calculus two. So you want to get used to it because um, this might pop up at any time. So what does this mean? It means you have an equation that involves, that is asking you that we can write y in terms of its own integral. So even when you try to isolate y, it's hard because it is inside an integral which is with respect to t, but y is a function of x. But you have an integral that goes from 2 to x. Now this brings back some memories from your calculus one, and that is the fundamental theorem of calculus part one and part two. And that's what you expect it to do here. So what should you do if you're faced with a problem like this? Just differentiate everything. Okay? Differentiate everything with respect to x and you'll see what life brings you away. Let's get into it. So if we differentiate everything with respect to x, let's see what we get. Here we're going to get dy dx. Here we're going to get dy dx, ddx rather, of 2, plus we're going to get ddx of this integral, 2 from 2 to x of t minus t, y as a function of t, close it dt. Now, we don't have a problem with this side because that's what we're looking for. We know how to differentiate a constant. We know it's going to be 0. But this is where FTC part 1 and 2 show up because when you differentiate this, it tells you that all you have to do is replace the t with x times the derivative of x, which we know is 1, so we don't really want to care about that. But that's all you have to do. You don't have to do anything else because the base here or the, the lower boundary is 2. So by FTC, um, what we have is this is going to be just x minus x times y as a function of x, which we had here, which is just y as a function of x. Okay, um, I'm just going to leave it as y. I don't want to rewrite anything. And... That's it. No way. It is so easy, right? So here, what we have here, I can write as y prime. So this gives us a differential equation. y prime equals x minus x. In fact, I can factor out this x so that I have 1 minus y. Just one move and life is just beautiful. So what do you do? Now, this is a differential equation that you can easily separate and then take the integral of both sides. So what we do here, we say that dy dx is equal to x times 1 minus y. So I'm going to multiply both sides by dx and divide both sides by 1 minus y and see what I have. I'm going to have 1 over 1 minus y dy will be x dx. And now I can integrate both sides. If I integrate this, I integrate this, I know how to integrate 1 over 1 minus y. It's going to be a natural log of the absolute value of 1 minus y. But during the u substitution here, you're going to get a negative. So you want to recognize that negative. So it's going to be negative ln of the absolute value of 1 minus y. And on the right hand side, we're just going to integrate x. We're going to get x squared over 2. Thank you. And we have plus c. So if you ask, why didn't I put plus c on this side? Well, assume that I put plus c1, and on this side I put plus c2. And then I moved this c to this side. It became c2 minus c1, and I gave it a new name, big C. Okay, so here, what do we do? We need to know what c is. Now, this is where you have to get very smart. And go back to your knowledge of integration, especially definite integrals. Look, whenever you take an integral and the upper boundary is the same as the lower boundary, you know that your integral is going to be zero. You cannot integrate from A to A. 
you have to, A cannot be equal to whatever is down there. Okay, so why don't you make this the same as this? Let X be equal to two, because when X equals two, everything here becomes zero. So when X equals two, you're gonna have Y as a function of X is gonna be just two because it will be two plus zero. And when X is two, Y is also two. Come use that here. So just say, when x equals 2, y equals 2. You just did that from here, right? So what do we do? You just go plug in that value here. Negative natural log of 1 minus 2 will be equal to 2 squared over 2 plus c. Well, what does this look like? Negative natural log of 1 minus 2 is minus 1, but the absolute value gives us 1. What is the natural log of 1? Well, we know it's 0. We know this is going to be 2 plus c. So everything here is 0. 0 equals 2 plus c, and that means c equals negative 2. Bum, ba, da, da. Go plug in negative 2 here. So what do we have? We have negative ln of the absolute value of 1 minus y is equal to x squared over 2 x squared over 2 minus c, minus 2. Okay, we don't like this minus 1 here, so multiply both sides by minus 1, you end up with ln of 1 minus y is equal to what you have on this side, it's going to become 2 minus x squared over 2. Okay, the minus will flip and you switch sides. Let's get rid of this natural log. You're going to have absolute value of 1 minus y is equal to e to the 2 minus x squared over 2. We're almost done. Let's get rid of the absolute value. Free the guy. And that's going to be 1 minus y equals plus or minus on this side e to the, uh, what is it, 2 minus x squared over 2. Okay, let's isolate y and move this over to the other side. We're going to have, um, it doesn't matter, we're going to have negative, or we just say y is going to be 1 minus or plus, okay? Plus or minus. Let's still do plus or minus. Or minus or plus, I like to be accurate. Minus or plus e to the 2 minus x squared over 2. Well, I can leave my answer this way. Do I have to choose between 1 between plus or minus, I will take the positive option and say, hey, we're going to always be adding. So it's y is equal to 1 plus e to the 2 minus x squared over 2. And that is the solution to this integral equation. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.